We're looking at a Quattro 3000 today and we're gonna update the firmware and show you how to do it yourself. Now, let me prerequisite this with all inverters sold and distributed by Current Connected come already updated with the latest firmware and they're pre-programmed for lithium iron phosphate settings, which is what most systems these days use. You can tell if you got an inverter from us because we put our sticker here on the front panel that says sold and distributed by Current Connected, as well as on the inside here, we put a note in here. We write which firmware revision we update it to and uh, give you all of our details here for, um, for support. So uh, that is something that we do that a lot of other distributors don't. Getting started, the firmware update is very easy. On this Quattro, there are two ports here, and those are the VE bus ports. And the only two other things you will need is the interface MK3 and a standard RJ45 ethernet cable. This is nothing special. You can get these pretty much anywhere. However, the USB dongle, that is something you will need to buy and is proprietary to Victron. Since we're just here on the test bench, I'm gonna use some alligator clips to power this up. This is connected to a 48 volt battery bank, which is perfect for this inverter. Although in most systems, this would already be connected up already. From here, you just need to plug your ethernet cable into either one of these two VE bus ports. It doesn't matter which one and you don't need to plug anything else into the other port. However, if you do have like a Serbo GX in the system, you're gonna wanna unplug that. The only thing you can have on your VE bus is a digital multi-control, for example. From there, the other end can just be plugged into this interface. And now we're ready to plug the USB connector into our computer. After that, go ahead and flip your power switch to on. Now that this is turned on, I'm gonna take and stick my microphone closer into the inverter because I want you guys to hear the sound that this inverter makes because there is a huge difference when the inverter is updated to the latest firmware. With everything connected and powered up, we'll now want to head over to VictronEnergy.com. At the top right, they have a big giant downloads button. You're going to want to click on that. And the first line item here is the Victron Connect software. We're going to want to click on this Windows EXE because I'm using a Windows machine. And it will download. And I'm just going to save this to my downloads folder. With that downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and open it up and install it. And if you get a notice asking if you'd like to allow the app to make changes to your device, just click yes. From here, it's asking for a destination to install the software. I usually go with the default, at which point you can just click next. And pretty much just click next through all the menus and then click install. It's gonna go through a quick install process. And then after that, we are good to go and we can start the Victron Connect app. When the app opens up, it's already detecting our VE bus device, in this case, the Quattro, and it's gonna go ahead and retrieve the data. So now I can click on that device and it's going to open up a dialogue that looks like this. From here, we can see the state of the inverter and all the parameters going on, such as uh, AC voltage, battery voltage, that sort of thing. Now we're gonna wanna click on the setting gear at the top right, and you're gonna see settings disabled. Go ahead and click enable settings and type in the password provided to you from your Victron dealer. Now I can't give this out. However, if you purchased your inverter from us and need to follow this process, go ahead and contact us for the password. Otherwise, you're gonna need to contact your Victron dealer that you purchased the inverter from. Once you've entered the password, you're gonna to wanna to click on this icon here that looks like an old floppy disk. And what we're gonna do is save the settings. And I'm going to name this Quattro 3000 settings. If the inverter is already connected, you absolutely wanna save these settings because the firmware update process will wipe these out. So it's definitely a good idea to save them. However, if you have not yet configured the inverter, it, this step is not necessary. You can go straight to uh, the firmware update. And to do that, you're gonna to wanna to click on the three dot menu at the top and click product info. You can see in here we're on firmware version 481. However, version 494 is available to update. The nice part about Victron Connect is that we don't actually need to go download a firmware file. It's already loaded into the software here and all we need to do is click update. After that, select this VFF file 
and it'll come up with this confirmation menu showing the current version and new version, and then we can click the update button. After reading a brief warning, you can click OK, and the update procedure will begin. Now this may take some time. Make sure you don't shut the inverter down, and uh, yeah, just let it do its thing. This update process took about a minute and a half, and here in just a moment we'll be done, at which point you can go ahead and click continue now that the device has been updated. At this point you can reconnect to the inverter because we're going to want to load the settings that we saved earlier back into the inverter. To do that, click the gear icon to re-enable changing settings, and then once it loads everything you're going to see this download arrow button. Click that and select your file, and then click open. Now since previously I had the default settings in the inverter, there's no differences found in the file, so I can click OK. But for you, if you had changes, it would let you know about it, and then you can apply those changes and save them to the inverter. But from this point, we're just about good to go. Now, I'm trying to listen to this inverter after the firmware update, but if I move the mic close here in just a minute, it's going to be really hard to pick anything out. In fact, the uh, wall here behind my test bench is actually the bathroom, and uh, the exhaust fan in that bathroom resonating through the walls is about 10 times louder than this inverter. I really have to get my head real close to it to get my ear so that I can hear any noise. But here goes a comparison to earlier putting the microphone in the exact same position. Here goes. I've literally got nothing in terms of sound. I mean, I feel like I'm half deaf not being able to hear this, but it's a million times better, and now there's other functionality and bugs fixed with this inverter, so it's gonna perform a lot better for you, and most likely more efficient, especially if now you don't have that inefficiency and in sound coming from the transformer. So I hope this helped you guys get your inverter updated. Subscribe to the channel for more videos, and leave a thumbs up if this was helpful. Comment any questions down below, and we hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you for choosing Current Connected, and have a nice day.